This is Apollo Control. Less than a minute away from uh, acquisition of signal from Apollo 16. We'll stand by here for the first words from the crew and the burn report. Well, Houston, uh, Sleet 16 has arrived. Roger 16, copy and I'm clear. I've got a question. What do you think is the more difficult to believe? That extraterrestrial life truly exists? Or the notion that something that big could actually be kept from us? I think many would say the latter. And think about it. We're talking about a lot of people keeping mostly quiet for a lot of years. Seems far-fetched. I know, I agree. But on the other hand, do you really think the scores of inexplicable aircraft, aka UFOs, that are getting caught on cell phones and uploaded daily are all fake? And that the claims of a NASA cover-up many coming from former employees and astronauts themselves, are all rooted in lies? Well, that's unlikely as well. It's like this mind-jarring headache maker that, well, it can just be too much to think about. Ah, what a beautifully designed deterrent. The year, 1972. The Apollo 16 crew, consisting of Commander John Young, Lunar Module Pilot Charles Duke and Command Module Pilot Ken Mattingly passed over the far side of the moon before landing on the near side of the lunar surface. The mission snagged enough 70 millimeter images to piece together the clearest composite image of the far side of the moon up to that point. Now, this is the side of the moon we never see from Earth because as the moon orbits the Earth, it rotates at just the right speed to keep that side facing away from us. This is what we call tidal lock. Now, the first place people usually look for suspicious activity in images like this is where? The surface, in and around the craters and such, right? Well, we're a little different here, okay? So, we're not starting there. We're starting here, in the space around the moon. Mostly expecting, you hear me? expecting this area to have been completely blacked out by the image doctors. We see that quite often in modern digital planetary imagery. They'll just wipe these areas black because, well, who cares, right? Well, I care. And guess what? We got lucky. Although it's cropped pretty tight, the original space around the moon appears to be intact. And so you can't help but notice this. Is this a smudge on the original film? It's hard to tell, so we worked it over with exposure and contrast and got this. Okay, though it's still hard to identify, it does at least now take on more of a definitive shape. At this point, I'm on the fence as to whether it's an artifact on the film or some type of thing in space that was actually captured on the film. So let's move down here where we find something faint. In similar fashion as above, we add exposure and contrast and, well, there you have it. The first reaction I usually get from someone I show this is followed by, how could they miss that? Easy. They didn't see it. Can you see it? I think it was simply overlooked. Remember, this was 1972. They were working with actual film, not digital imagery. It was a lot more trouble back then to actually hide things in photographs. They had to create transparent overlays that masked out areas that might, according to a former NASA illustrator, confuse people. Then, with the overlays in place, they would re-photograph the image. My guess is they didn't see anything here that would be a threat. And in 1972, who out in the real world was going to scrutinize this image? 
The year is now 2017. The Cassini space probe has long since returned images confirming a hexagon-shaped North Pole on Saturn. Cassini also began exposing just how bizarre some of Saturn's primary 62 moons are. For example, Eopetus, the moon with the mysterious equatorial ridge that appears to divide it into two halves, also boasts a huge hexagon-shaped crater. A smaller moon, Mimas, also has a large hex-shaped crater. And the largest of these three moons, Tethys, also has a huge six-sided crater. Why am I bringing this up about all these hexagons? Well, because it's not just Saturn's North Pole and a few craters on a few moons. It's all over the solar system. There are an undetermined number of hexagon-shaped craters of various sizes all over Saturn's moons, on our own moon, on Mercury, and even on Sears, a local dwarf planet. Nobody knows the significance yet, or if they do, they're not telling us. But I seriously doubt these are impact craters. Dr. Norman Berggren, a former NASA engineer who held a position at NASA's Ames Research Center, started making claims back in the 1980s that there were alien spacecraft doing things to the rings of Saturn. Now, hold on to that thought while we introduce Prometheus, one of Saturn's smaller moons. It kind of resembles a potato in this picture. Prometheus was discovered by the Voyager 1 probe in 1980. It's what we call a shepherd moon because it works to actually herd the ring particles by clearing gaps in the ring material and it also keeps particles within a ring contained. Now this image of Prometheus has been altered, digitally falsified. Somebody does not want us to think this is anything other than a big space rock orbiting Saturn. It's our human ignorance that makes it quite easy to disguise certain alien-made objects from us in imagery. A light digital cover in the middle is all it takes sometimes, which allows a fair amount of fidelity to remain in terms of the basic overall shape. Here, we'll isolate what appears to be the front section. At times, we'll use this giant pink bird to provide a sense of depth. Let's take a look at a few more of these small moons. Just the initial shapes of these things should be raising some serious questions with you.
This particular spacecraft is under very heavy digital cover and we cannot get through the bulk of it. Just not possible. However, a few small exposed areas were left, giving us a small glimpse of the actual material of which the craft was constructed. Here, it almost seems like someone intentionally left a notch so that we can see. The shape of Atlas is alarming, and they really laid it on thick here. However, some things did come through around this mid area. Considering what we found with the others, I'd say this is enough to suggest Atlas is artificial underneath a heavy digital facade. Something I find to be interesting in NASA articles and websites along with other astronomy sites who get their base information largely from NASA as we all do is the verbiage that is sometimes used when describing what these smaller moons are doing in and around the rings and gaps of Saturn. For example, Pan is a ring shepherd and is responsible for keeping the gap free of ring particles. Now this is from Wikipedia, yes, but I'm sure NASA is on top of that information and they very carefully word everything. It doesn't state that Pan is the reason the gap is free of particles. That wouldn't send up a flag. Instead, it states that it is responsible for keeping it free of ring particles. Now, if it's responsible for doing a task, then it either has a free will or is artificial and was designed to perform said task by an intelligent source. Again, they are very careful with their words. Read into the verbiage here. I challenge you to consider the possibility that these rings are not there by mere chance. They are not maintained by mere chance. And that they themselves may have a purpose, which we will save for another discussion. Pay attention. Be aware. NASA, the European Space Agency, other space agencies, including China's, are full of brilliant people. And they're mostly good people, I, I would hope. But they cannot reveal what they find in its entirety at this time. Not yet. But we will continue to work to bring you everything that they do allow. Searching for every clue, we will be back soon.